Stop me if you've heard this one before. Republicans are bending over backwards to defend Donald Trump. This time, it is for comments he made behind closed doors on Capitol Hill, calling the city of Milwaukee, which is, you know, hosting the Republican National Convention, quote, horrible. But it seems lawmakers can't get their story straight. Some claim Trump was referring to the city's crime rate. Others insisted he was referencing election integrity. And a few, well, they pretended he didn't say it at all. Jamie Harrison, chair of the Democratic National Committee, joins us now. Chairman. Good. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. All right, so let me get this straight. The RNC spends an entire year going around the country to find the perfect spot to host their convention for Donald Trump. And he comes back now and goes, oh, it's just horrible. It, how, how, what does that, uh, tell people what that means for donors, what that means for activists, what that means for the city. We saw the mayor uh, come out and, and say, well, y'all still coming, right? Because we're ready for you. We're ready to do what we need to do. But talk a little bit about the impact. Uh, uh, when you put this process together, is it's detailed, it's important. And the selection of a city is not just a one-off. Um, there were people in Trump's orbit who were part of that process. Uh, his freaking daughter-in-law is sitting at the head of the RNC. So how does this break for them, um, particularly given that you have members of Congress going, did he say that? No, he didn't say that. He said this. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, on a positive, uh, positive note, happy Father's Day weekend to you, Brother Chair. Thank um, you, sir. And to, and to all of the fathers out there. Listen, this is this is a disaster for Donald Trump and the and the Republican Party. There's so much that goes into Michael, as you know, goes into uh, selecting a city for your convention, but also working with that city for the convention. You're working closely with the mayor. You're working closely with, with the governor and all of the security and emergency officials. Uh, those folks aren't happy today that. The nominee for the Republican Party believes that their city is a horrible city. Uh, so many of those nuanced things in the end that you have to yep. work out, those those folks are going to just turn their heads and turn a blind eye. So, you know, <laughs> if they needed that street closure or they needed something to happen, they're like, well, go to the city that you don't think is horrible, right? I'm also wondering if I'm Rents Priebus, who is the, the chair of the financing for this convention, what the hell is he going to do in order to encourage people to come and invest more money into the RNC in Milwaukee? Listen, I was in Milwaukee this last weekend. I marched in the Pride Parade. I had a, a black men's roundtable. Uh, I, I had a roundtable with Latino uh, citizens there about immigration. I visited churches. This is a remarkable city, a uh, vibrant city, uh, very, very diverse, has a, a proud union background. And so it is, it is amazing how Donald Trump just stepped in this. And this is the city where the largest number of voters in probably the most prominent battleground state. I was going to say, state. exactly. It, it, it is, it's idiotic. <laughs> it is crazy. absolutely idiotic. But and that's why keep, keep Donald Trump on TV as much as possible, because he will say the dumb crap like this every time and get wrap this election for Joe Biden. Well, Mr. Chair, speaking of Joe Biden, we are seeing him uh, deplane in Los Angeles right now. Uh, he is arriving in L.A. after concluding the G7 summit in Italy. And folks might be wondering why the president is in L.A. He has got a, a star-studded fundraiser that he is attending this evening. He is getting into uh, the beast right now with his daughter, Ashley. And after a bit, Ashley looks tired. Joe Biden looks ready to rumble, honey. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, talk to us about this event that's happening in L.A., this fundraiser. This is why you are not at the table with us today. You are also going to be attending this fundraiser. Um, how important are the efforts that you all are undertaking in L.A., and how will that translate to broader support for Democrats across the board um, with the monies? Because the money, we know, is yes. important. It's so important. Well, listen, this is the, the second part of, of, you remember we had the three presidents. This one will be two presidents. And, and I think we have another event later on uh, next week in which uh, President Biden will be with President Clinton and Secretary Clinton. Um, you know, this is going to be a great event. We're, we're going to have President o uh, Obama, President Biden. We'll have George Clooney, Julia Roberts. Uh, we'll get an opportunity for folks to really talk about how unified we are as a party 
moving into this election and how we have to do everything possible uh, to compete in these battleground states. And as you said, the proceeds of these events go to what we're doing in the battleground states. In those battleground states, we have opened almost 200, over 200 offices uh, in places like Wisconsin and, and Pennsylvania and Michigan. Now, I'm, I'm hearing that the Republicans haven't opened any. Uh, actually, they had, and in Milwaukee, <laughs> ironically, in Milwaukee, they had one of these African-American outreach centers that Rona McDaniel opened. Well, they've since closed that, and now it is an ice cream shop. So the next time <laughs> Joe Biden goes to Milwaukee, we'll make sure that he stops by there and you know, Have some ice cream. give a little tip. <laughs> give a little tip uh, mm. to, to the folks in that new RNC ice cream shop that's there. Mr. Chairman, you talked about battleground states, but you're also investing $2 million in 11 non-battleground states. I mean, first, let me, before I even go to you, Chairman Harrison, can we just talk, Michael Steele, about the fact that <laughs> over at the RNC, they're using their money to pay for Donald Trump's legal bills. Right. DNC has so much money, they're investing in non-battleground states. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. And, and Chairman, that's you want to be in this position right now if you're, if you're a national party, right? I mean, you, you are yes. on the ground, you are in the field with voters. You're in states like Wisconsin, um, where you know, apparently, I guess, the Republicans now think it's a horrible place to be. Um, so let them think that. Meanwhile, you're going to do, be, continue to do what? The work you're already out there doing, building the resources and putting them in place. That's exactly right. And this is what we did in the midterm. Part of how we beat back the red wave was we went back to this 50-state strategy of investing on the ground early in these states, not only the battleground states, but in all states. You know, one thing that President Biden told me when I became the, the DNC chair and he asked me to become the DNC chair was that he was recommitting uh, uh, this party to investing in Democrats all over the country. And so we have increased the amount of money that we are sending to state parties by 25 percent in the previous cycle. When you go back to the golden days of the 50 state strategy, we are even 45 percent more than what Howard Dean in terms of sending resources into all of our states across the country. And so that is paying dividends because we understand it's not just the top of the ticket. It is also the bottom of the ticket, the state house races, the state senate races. Michael, you know it. I mean, you were the expert in doing this at the RNC, that it's investing in those on the ground races and that is how you lift the entire uh the, the entire boat and you continue to win and so that's that's our strategy at the dnc and this is a strategy that president biden wanted us to invest in uh we've done a lot we're going to continue to do more but we're investing in montana south dakota ohio um alaska nebraska texas these are places where you know, the National Party over the last few years haven't always given resources, but we're pouring resources there so that we can compete everywhere. Mm, I did a little, yeah, a little they, raise we, the roof for Nebraska, a little hometown <laughs> love for the for the folks in District Ma Two. Maryland I know they also, appreciate Michael, it. Maryland also. Oh, I know, uh, <laughs> I know. Maryland's going to be competitive this year. We are being told to yeah. go. We're having a little too much fun with you, Chair Harrison, uh, Alicia. Please, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Dean.